6.37, good morning to you. This is Breakfast with me and her. <laughs> Let's have a look at today's front pages for you now. And the Times draws attention to the Home Secretary's fellow Bravman asking civil servants to help her avoid a speeding fine by arranging a private driving awareness course. I shouldn't miss the fine. You still get the fine. You still get the fine. No, I don't you think you points. do. Yeah, you don't get the points, but you still have to pay Always the fine. Always like Yeah. Yeah, and I think she's taken the points now. Yeah. I think that's what's happened. Um, the Observer has a Tory donor Karen Chinana being investigated over allegations of fraud and money laundering, apparently. The front page of The Express gives light to Business Secretary Kemi Badenoch predicting Britain's future outside of the EU to be a roaring success. Uh, Sunday Telegraph dedicates their front page to the government's migration czar, reportedly backing plans to crack down on foreign graduate visas. And finally, the Sunday People says we've had our fill, as it's revealed that Philip Schofield has officially left this morning. Uh, let's talk to journalist and political consultant Emma Burnell and editor of Spiked, Tom Slater. Good morning to you both. Okay. Nice to see you. Um, let's kick off, should we? I don't know who's doing it with... Um, Suella Braverman in the Sunday Times. I think that's me. Um, as you uh, might be unsurprised to know, I'm not massively impressed. Yeah. Uh, with, I mean, it's not the worst thing Suella Braverman's done today, probably, but um, she uh, basically has tried to use her position to circumvent the rules that all of us have been caught by at some point or another. Um, and the thing about the rules is if you're in charge of making them, and then you break them, you should take the consequences. And that's what I think it, this story really boils down to. It's not, yeah, no one really cares if Swella Bruffman was going over the speed limit a bit. But the fact that she tried to not accept the consequences, I think, just says too much about her lack of character. But well, hold on a minute. It's, it's a slightly confusing picture, right? Because the headline says, you know, she wants you to avoid speeding fine. Yeah, she was avoiding, trying to avoid the points. But and it's get the, the points, because you still yeah. pay the fine. So it's all a bit you confusing. You pay a smaller fine, uh, and uh, if you go on the course you pay, I think it's a half the fine. Well, no, it wasn't last time I did. It was the same amount. Um, it was the same amount, but you don't get the points. But you don't get the points, get and the, the po points will, of course, um, increase your insurance. But what it doesn't, but what it doesn't, what she's not trying to do, she's not trying to avoid the consequences, is she? If she's saying, I'll, I'll do the awareness course, I just don't want to do it with other people. Well, she, uh, what she wants, she'll do the awareness course for her. What she doesn't want is us being aware that she's broken the rules and the law, uh, and she's the Home Secretary, so there's a bit of a problem with that. <laughs> Yeah, Tom? I just think it's a bit of a non-story, really. I mean, you know, Home Secretary tries to avoid bad news about her getting out is not necessarily the most scandalising thing in the world. Um, I think it's just because because the Tories have provided so many scandals in recent years as a continuing appetite for them, but it feels like we're kind of chasing smaller and smaller ones as we go along. I think it's more that there's an accumulation, and so every, I, mean, I agree with you, this is not the biggest Tory scandal this week, never mind, um, you know, at all. But um, I think there's just that whiff of, you know, it, 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 please. Mm. It, it feels like that mid-90s point where there's just, just, it's tired. And I think the reason that the, these stories can take on more precedence is because they've got nothing else to shout about. Yeah. They've got yeah. not, no great recent electoral success to point yeah, too yeah, far yeah. from it, and so these things take up more oxygen than they might. Yeah. Suppose, you know. But what about people who say, you know, one rule for them, one rule for us? They don't like to see people looking, especially politicians, mm -hmm. looking for that special treatment, do they? I, I agree. I think it's, it's never a good look, but also it's something which, uh, regrettably, is not the first time that something like this has happened. And so I think I think the one thing that we always have to bear in mind is that there is a lot of cynicism about politicians in general, so these things don't tend to change people's opinions of them necessarily. No, but they do mind. reinforce it, and that is a problem. Yeah, well, that's a, fair, that's a fair, very valid point, actually. Mm. Yeah, reinforcing it, yeah. Um, let's have a look at the Sunday Express, should we? Um, mm. Looking at Brexit, it's going to be a roaring success. It's going to be a roaring success, so this is Kemi Bay, not the trade minister, trying to um, change the mood music around Brexit, which has been pretty negative recently, not least because I think, because the Tories have fundamentally sort of failed to capitalise on it and to do anything with it um, substantial, that they're now kind of trying to make that argument. Specifically, um, Kemi Badenoch is meeting various Gulf states to try 
try and strike some sort of deal to bring um, more money into Britain. There's also, she points to the various other things that have been done since Brexit, joining CPTPP, the Trans-Pacific well <laughs> um, <laughs> Partnership, like which, um, again, is not hugely economically significant, certainly not in the short term, but is a significant win in, that, in the sense of... Um, tilting away from the European Union and towards the wider world, um, and also references to things that we wouldn't have been able to change without, while still being in the EU, the tampon tax, scrapping that being another example. Um, but I, th I think the part of the problem here is the fact that there have been so many wasted years on, if you did want to shift Britain's economic model to something which we wouldn't have been able to do under the confines of the European Union, which, by the way, could have been more left or more right, you just what you do with that freedom is completely up to you, um, because of the Tories' inability to capitalise on that. They're much more open to these attacks of, well, what was the point of it? But it's like, what, what, this is what I don't get. And I, I understand people being a bit frustrated, in mm -hmm. a sense, with, all, with, with that situation. But in terms of pandemic yeah. and the consequences, whether you agree with it or not, mm -hmm. and the economic situation we've faced, it would have been extremely difficult to have, to have moved any faster than this, wouldn't it? Well, I, I do tend to agree, because I think when people blame everything economically on Brexit, you think there are so many once in a generation kind of black swan events that have taken place between us formally leaving in 2019 and, and now. Mm. It's gotten to the point where you, it's, it's absurd to ignore, you know, you've had, you have had a pandemic, you have got war in Europe, you've got the um, consequential, you know, energy crisis and people ignore that the fact that a lot of these problems are obviously plaguing even core European Union countries. Germany has higher energy prices than we do and so on. So to blame everything on Brexit is ridiculous. Also, I think it gets away from the fact that Brexit was fundamentally about who sets the laws that we live under, who rules, who should be make accountable for the for the laws that we live under. What you did with it was then up to your, your government. It was fundamentally a sort of democratic sovereign question. So I think in, in a sense, sometimes the, the, the focus on the economics is important, but at the same time, it's what you do with those powers. It's, it's a, fundamentally was a democratic question. I think we can miss that when we're just talking about GDP numbers in the yeah. near term. Yeah, yeah. Emma, should we look at something totally different now? <laughs> it's on the front page of most of the newspapers this morning. Of course, the departure of, of Flip Schofield from this morning. We've had our fill, says the Sunday people. It, yes, it feels like half a story, doesn't it? Um, there have been sort of glowing tributes, but when someone leaves with immediate effect, um, it does, you know, you would expect normally to have someone have, particularly someone so high profile, who's been doing a show like that for such a long time, to have a kind of leaving period, a period of celebration. Um, it feels like it's all fallen apart very, very quickly. Um, there's a fantastic quote, I think it's William Faulkner, who said, how did things fall apart very slowly and then very suddenly? Yeah. Um, and that's what this feels like. Um, it will be very interesting to see what happens next. I, If I were in ITV shoes, I'm not a producer, but I would move on completely in the way that they did. They didn't just have Judy without Richard, for example, in the first iteration of that show. So I think there are um, ways that they can move the show forward, but it just all feels like something very tawdry um, and just snipey, and there's been so much kind of backbiting going on like half understood behind the scenes um, and it's a real shame because obviously they two years ago they were at the top of their game they were you know coming in rolling in drunk winning awards having a great old time and it just feels very sad that it's ended this way